People don't tell women the truth these days. Men get told the truth all the time. We have no problem telling average men, you ain't crap. But if I just happen to have the nerve to agree with the woman that says she's average, then I'm Satan. I think that's interesting. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we're going to explore why some women don't understand why men don't want them. We'll also discuss women's respect toward men and how many say they can't find a good man. Could it be they're looking in the wrong places or that the good ones are already taken? If you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Join the movement and add your two cents. It's the only contribution we ask for, brother. Share your experiences in the comments to guide other men. Without further ado, let's get started. If a woman needs love, a man needs respect. Right. But it's almost easy for us to say, well, he can get my respect when he earns it. Wow. Right. Can you imagine if your husband said she can have my love when she wow. earns it? Just as much as women need love, your husband needs respect. Right. Not only was he created to be able to need this, to receive it, he was built that way. He's going to be drawn to the places where he actually does receive wow. it. That's right. Whether it's his workplace, you know, some of us are like, why is he always out of the house? Why doesn't he like to be at home? Why does he always feel so grumpy or look so grumpy when he's at home? But then for some reason, when we're out with his friends or when he's at work, he, he, he's thriving there. He, you see so much joy in him. It's because he's receiving respect. He's going to find respect in the relationships where he receives it. And if that's the case, we've got to figure out a way to understand that there is a true need for a man to be able to receive respect. That's good. Let me explain why this happens. Once, an uncle of mine, watching how I interacted with my girlfriend back in the day, told me a phrase that stuck with me. Nephew, learn to show weakness in your needs and strength in your boundaries. And there's the key, my friends. Nowadays, many men are strong in their needs but weak in their boundaries. First. Let's talk about those boundaries. When you're in a serious relationship with a woman, it's essential to discuss your red lines, those things you won't tolerate even in your wildest dreams. It could be that you don't allow disrespect like her raising her voice at you, those girls' trips that seem straight out of a movie, male friends who might have other intentions, not answering your calls or letting men into your house when you're not around. Anything that makes you raise an eyebrow, you need to tell your woman. The problem is that many men are afraid to tell their partner what they don't like. They stay silent, putting up with disrespect, but they have no problem setting others straight. That's why you see everyone respects them except their partner, who keeps crossing their boundaries as if they were imaginary lines. So when she crosses your limits, you leave, you go, you act accordingly to her disrespect. I always say, if you warn twice the third time you act, you don't say anything. You just leave. You make it clear with actions. I bet anything she won't do it again because she respects her man and knows what's coming if she does. But anyway, I'll explain the rest later. All right, gentlemen, I got a lovely young woman asking a question that many women have. Let's hear what it is. Why do men have this irrational fear that women are going to use them for money that they don't have? Oh, the dripping condescension. Did you hear it? Irrational fear. It's irrational to worry that you might lose everything if you get involved in a relationship with a woman. I mean, apparently no guy has ever lost anything after a relationship with a woman has ended. Because the only way that fear would be irrational would be if indeed that statement were true. Yet we all know it's not. I mean, I myself lost everything in a divorce. And I've had many friends who've lost everything in divorce. And oh, by the way, those other millions of men that have gone through divorce, guess what? They've lost everything too. Which means her claim that men's fear is irrational is, well, yep, you guessed it, irrational. But let's see what else she has to say. Like, sir, you have lawn chairs in your living room. You are safe. <laughs> you no, know, I laugh every time I hear women make this claim. They actually believe that all single men really, all of them have lawn chairs as their furniture, which is laughable at best. But here's the point that she doesn't want to hear. It's not about where you're at now. It's where you're going to be in the future. Because let's say you're a young couple in your early 20s. You decide to get married. Yeah, at the time, you might be broke or have very little. That's the way almost all of us started out. But over time, you build things up. You grow a family. You buy a house. 
you get a nice car, you start building your retirement, and you start enjoying life. And then she gets bored. She decides that, well, she can do better. Chad down the street, he's going to be interested in her. So she files for divorce. Suddenly, everything you've accumulated over the past few years is right out the window. Because she's going to get the house, she's going to get the nice car, she's going to get the kids, and oh yeah, a nice portion of his income for the next few years. Leaving him so broke that he ends up, wait for it, with lawn chairs as his furniture. Funny how that is. She doesn't lose anything. All that wealth gets transferred to her. And they know that, which is why they're the ones filing for divorce 80% of the time. Heck, they've even come up with a phrase for it. It's called a starter marriage. Then you see comments like this, that it's irrational for men to fear this. They should just sign up for it. Be willing to lose everything. Yet it happens to millions upon millions upon millions of men every single day. And when men look at that, the rational decision is to walk away from relationships and marriage. The rational decision is to understand there is no benefit. The risk far far outweighs the reward. And men have finally come to that realization, which is why they're walking away. They're done. So you ladies can continue to mock us for it. I don't really see how that benefits you, but if it does, by all means. Because in the end, the men are the ones who come out ahead. It's definitely not an irrational or made-up fear. There are proofs and studies that back it up. Women initiate more divorces, and in some cases have come out financially ahead after one or more divorces. Yes, you heard that right. It's not fear of love. It's fear that she'll legally walk away with my money. Because, let's be honest, the system finds it convenient to take from the man to give to the woman. That's why we see women in their 30s looking for a provider to offer long-term financial security. And it's no coincidence that the divorce rate between ages 43 and 50 is 45%, right when the family has paid off assets like the house. Quite the coincidence. And why do you think the marriage rate in this country is between 27 and 33 years old, and divorces happen at 39 and 40? There's almost always a seven to eight year gap, which is when an average family finishes paying off their home. The math doesn't lie. The order of numbers doesn't change the outcome. Marriage, my friends, financially doesn't benefit a man. He doesn't want you. That's why he's not making plans with you. I got a lot of single girlies in this family and we did have this chat last year, but it seems like we need another one. And of course I can speak on this because this is how I got wifed up and had all of you, my kids. If you're like, ah, I can't tell if he likes me. He doesn't. Listen to me. If he wanted you, you would know. He would do anything. He would swim through shark infested waters. He would move heaven and earth. He would walk barefoot on broken glass just to get to you if he wanted you um he's not calling because he doesn't want you he's not texting you because he doesn't want you i know i sound harsh but sometimes a mother needs to give tough love you've heard it before if he wanted to he would because if he wanted to he would here's the mindset switch though a man will really love a woman when she really loves herself, when she really prioritizes herself. Take your power back, take it. You are not a desperate loser. When you love yourself so much more than you love them, I promise you, the right one will come along. You are that bitch. I love you, kids. Stop it. Get some help. There's something many women don't understand. Men discard in silence. Here comes the second part of my uncle's wise advice. Learn to show weakness in your needs. He was referring to using your needs as tests for women, especially if you're considering something serious. Let me give you some examples. Imagine you're at work grinding away for nine hours, and your woman calls you, Honey, where are you? I want to see you. You reply, I'm tired. I've been working nonstop for nine hours and I haven't eaten anything. You stay silent waiting for her reaction. If she says, well, when you're done and have eaten something, give me a call. That woman just failed the test, my friend. Another example, you tell your girl you're going out on Friday. Friday comes and she calls to confirm. You say, sorry, babe, 
I had an unexpected expense and don't have any money. Plus, I'm a bit tired from work. You wait for her response if she says, Okay, we'll go out another day. She has failed once again. You're showing a weakness in a need you could handle yourself, but you want to see her reaction. If in the first case, she doesn't say, Come over to my place, I'll cook something for you, or I'll bring you something to eat at your place, honey. And in the second case, she doesn't say, Baby, take a shower. I'll pick you up and it's my treat. Then that woman doesn't love you. Because, gentlemen, women are natural caregivers. If she doesn't perform acts of service for her man, she doesn't love him. That woman isn't wife material. When you stop being useful to her, she'll leave because she doesn't have genuine interest in you. So, you know, pay attention to those signals. As my uncle used to say, forewarned is forearmed. And in this case, he was absolutely right. Absolutely insane how much women expect from men that they're only dating. Men in the early dating stages do not owe you anything. Only thing a man owes you is connection, compatibility, a little bit of attention, but you're not his woman yet. Why does he have to pay your bills, pay you gifts, take you out on expensive dates? Prove that he can earn your love? That's absolutely wild how some women act in the early dating stages. Men don't owe you anything. They have other responsibilities, bills as well. However, if you're his woman, then he can spoil you. You should never expect it. I'm just saying, women have a convoluted idea of how dating should be and what dating actually is about. Absolutely wild. Absolutely insane. Men don't owe you anything while dating. Totally agree, my friends. This is where what I mentioned earlier comes into play. Nowadays, men sometimes mess up because when wooing a woman, we try to cover all her needs, wanting to be her superhero, her dad, her everything. And what happens? The woman never covers the man's needs. Sometimes, as I said, it's because that man always portrays himself as the super alpha male, never showing vulnerability in his needs. And that makes the woman not do acts of kindness for him and only focus on asking for more and more. Brothers, it's important to allow women to do things for you too. Cook you a meal, pay for a date, help you with a problem. Any need you have, let her invest her time, attention, or resources. It doesn't have to be all the time, but test the woman with small things. They love to feel useful and appreciated. If you doubt it, think about this. You surely know that woman who's a goddess and is dating a guy we all look at and say, what does she see in him? A textbook loser. But she's crazy about him. Why? Because that man allows her to help him, to connect with her caring side, to feel that she's contributing to the relationship. For example, I cooked this for my partner. I helped my boyfriend with this. That makes the woman invest in the relationship. They like to feel needed and valued. That's why when a relationship ends, they sometimes say, that man is who he is because of me. I invested my valuable years and youth. Because she invested, and that's very important to them. So, you see, it's not about being the super macho who never needs anything. Allow them to invest in the relationship, too. It's a two-way street. He is tired. He doesn't have any more to give. When he goes to work, someone needs him. When he comes home, someone needs him. Someone always needs something from him. Someone always needs to speak to him, talk to him. He doesn't get even just a few minutes to himself. He doesn't get five minutes to cry or break down. If he has a bad day, he doesn't have time to process that or to have emotions. And on top of all of those things, if that's not enough, he still has to make sure that the bills are paid and that his family is taken care of and provided for. He is making sure that all of their needs are met. His needs, his needs are absolutely the last thing that he is worried about. His mental health is completely irrelevant. He just has to make sure that everyone else is provided for and that he protects his family. And yet we wonder and we question 
why men's suicide rate is so high. It's not that hard. Do you know why I always tell you that your top priority should be yourself? Because a man who learns to prioritize himself is more productive, makes his family happier, and stays mentally healthier. Plus, he keeps himself in better physical shape and knows how to disconnect to stay calm when problems arise as the head of the family. That's why I support you taking time for yourself, even if you have kids or a partner. We recommend hitting the gym to unwind, having friends to go out and chat with. If your partner gets upset because you take a day to do something solo, it's important to communicate and find balance. Every man should reserve at least one day a month for himself. If your life falls apart just because you take one day for yourself, then the foundations of your castle might need some reinforcement. You need to disconnect, play a sport, talk to a friend, go fishing, or any activity you enjoy. Hopefully not video games, because I don't recommend those. It should be something that gets you out of the house for a few hours, allowing your mind to escape from daily stresses. Personally, I enjoy a relaxing massage once a month. A friend recommended it to me, and it's one of the best things you can add to your life, I assure you. So make sure to have a day for yourself. They're the good men. Where are they? I keep seeing that video. They're hiding. All of your videos of, you know, screaming and saying how much you hate men and your icks because, I don't know, they breathe. Uh, they just decided they're going to be hiding for a while. They're done. They're taking a vacation from women. They're probably at home. If they're not at work, they're at home. And they're just watching TikToks of women horrified being very very happy that they made their choice to just be single and choose peace over crazy toxicity oh and where are the good women they they're at home too yeah they're they're at home looking like this and uh all the other girls they're out at the club they're at the bar dating the same six three guy that's probably texting all of them he has multiple girlfriends and all the good people were at home on reddit probably going down a deep rabbit hole we shouldn't, scaring ourselves about the world, and just scrolling through our phones looking like this. Like I always say, if you're really interested in meeting a man, why not make the first move yourself? There's no need to be afraid. I'll bet you anything that three out of five times, you'll end up on a date. In fact, it's known that 60% of the time when a woman asks a man out, she gets the date. It's not magic, it's statistics. With those numbers, you shouldn't fear failure. Plus, you might have better luck finding a man with the qualities you like. There are plenty of good men out there who are simply tired of the same old games and wouldn't reject a woman who takes the initiative. Or is it that you're afraid of rejection? Oh my god, there are just like no good guys out there. Everybody's terrible. Dating apps are the worst. Like every guy I meet is such an asshole. Like I just don't understand. Like I'm going to be single forever because it's just so hard out there. Want to know a secret where all the nice guys are? Yeah? Okay. Look around. They're everywhere, okay? They're the ones that you put in the friend zone. They're the ones on your dating app inbox that you've just ignored. They're the ones that have been repeatedly asking you out, but that you won't go out with because they don't make your stomach flip. Like that asshole traumatic guy that's unavailable, that's been stringing you along forever and that you can't let go of. So where's the real ownership that we have? It comes down to working on ourselves, getting over that toxic behavior so that we can see somebody for who they really are. Understanding that social media and the movies and everything has lied to you about what they believe a true relationship should look like. It's not as exciting as you think, but it can be secure and stable and wonderful. And there are amazing guys out there that would be a husband and a father and a friend to you. And you need to do the work so that you can wake up and actually see them. There's a very curious cognitive bias where when you desire something, for example, a white car of a specific brand, you might start seeing that car everywhere that month. Is it because there are too many of that car? Maybe. But it's more because your mind focuses on what you like. That's what it seeks. Women fall into this a lot. They like the chads, narcissistic, uninterested guys who sometimes treat them poorly but stir up a roller coaster of emotions in them. These women go crazy for them. The man who has good intentions, who treats them well, sometimes there are several like that, they don't even notice them as if they didn't exist. They're in what this woman calls the friend zone, on social networks, in activities they do. Simply put, their mind doesn't see them that way and passes over them. That's why, when they hit their 30s, 
whether because they've gone through a lot of suffering, want economic security instead of more excitement, or have hit the wall, as we know the wall doesn't forgive, <laughs> that's when their tastes or interests change. They start wanting and looking for, giving chances to the beta provider, who offers them long-term economic security but doesn't spark any interest in this woman's sexual department, he's just her financial security. Be careful with this type of women who always complain about not having a partner. But you notice they always have men chasing after them because they're not looking for a relationship but a wallet on legs. Where are all the good men? Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, ladies, but they're done. They've walked away from today's modern women. They're done with dating, done with marriage, done with relationships. And no, ladies, it's not because they're scared, like you all are telling each other is the case. No, the real reason they're leaving is because they don't see a point in relationships anymore. Because there is no point in relationships for today's men. They're expected to give, give, give while getting nothing in return. They're told that they need to honor, respect, and provide for women while never seeing it reciprocated to them in any way. They've been told time and again that they aren't needed, aren't wanted, aren't necessary, and that they should just go away and leave women alone. And ladies, we've heard you loud and clear. We've said, fine, if that's what you want, we're going to give it to you. And that, ladies, is where these good men are, off doing their own thing and enjoying life, because they are done, done dealing with the drama, narcissism, and insane expectations most of you have. Men are done with never being acknowledged, let alone appreciated, for all that they do. So if you're wondering why all the men have walked away, there's your reasons. I have always had my honest opinion about this. I don't like the idea of a man being alone. I believe that if you're a man who does things right, you shouldn't have to die alone. I know that women nowadays, the modern ones as we see here, are not good. But there are still many good women out there. Moreover, I think there are options you can consider before resigning yourself for life. There are 195 countries in the world you can travel. Also, if things aren't going well in your state, you can change locations. I think you can try to explore your options. Now, about getting married. You have the option of a prenuptial agreement or simply telling her that you don't want to get married and that you can live together. Many women accept this too. What I'm saying is that at least give yourself the opportunity to try. Just be smart and protect yourself. But more than ever, we need men of value to straighten out this country. That's my opinion. I respect everyone's views. I'll read your thoughts in the comments. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about there being no good men on the market? What is your reason for having abandoned dating? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.